Good day all you overcomers out there, long time no see. I just jumped on here to give uh, you a quick message uh, for all of you who are persistent, who are winners, who don't give up, who are going to do everything in your power to reach your goals and not just your power. But you are going to, you are the ones out there who are trying, striving, achieving. You're persistent overcomers. You're not letting any hurdle get in your way. You're jumping over the hurdles and you keep it moving. Those are the people who this message is for today. And this entry, this right here, is titled, That Problem Ain't No Giant. You make it look like a giant. You hear me? That problem ain't no giant. You make it look like a giant. Let's talk about this giant that I'm referring to. What are you looking in the face of and seeing that it seems larger than what it appears? You know how you look out your side mirror of your car and, and it says on, on that right side mirror of your car, objects and mirror are closer than they appear. I want us to take a look at the appearance of a thing. Can we do that for a minute? Just take a look at a, a, the appearance of a thing. The appearance of a thing, how you perceive things, a major exam you have to take, a major project you have to complete, a house that you want to purchase, co-parenting. All of these things can seemingly be attached to a goal of yours now or at one time in your life, right? But what does it appear like to you? What does it appear like to you after the final exam, you get to become president of the largest finance group of your division. How can that happen? You persevere, you overcome, because there's gonna be obstacles. After you complete the project, you, you have a state-of-the-art basement. You look at the basement and you're looking like overwhelming. It looks like a huge project. You're like, I'm never gonna be able to finish this. You have to change that lens. You have to realize what the goal is that you want and you have to see it. After you complete the application and closing process, you get your own home. How many of you have gone through that process and at first it seems so daunting, it always seems like there's just so much paperwork, so many things that you have to submit, things that get in your way, but at the end, the end of that is you own your own property. What's the problem? After you strategize how to effectively collaborate with uh, the other parent, you get to rejoice over raising a well-rounded child. What's the problem? In Numbers 13, let's take a look there. In Numbers 13, I had a Bible right here. And y'all remember in Numbers 13, where it speaks to there being a group, a group of prestige men. Remember that? If you, if you all read, you will know um, this story. If not, turn to it at the time that is available to you to read about this in Numbers 13. There was a group of prestige men who were sent to spy out a section of a land to find out what type of dwelling it was. The spies had to return with a report. They had to return to a report of this to the larger group of kin. And after about 40 days, they let the fruit speak for itself. This is what happens. The fruit speaks for itself. Their words were, the land flowed with milk and honey, and they were showed evidence of ripe fruit. The land flowed with milk and honey, so it had riches in it. It flowed with milk and honey. They came back with the evidence. What was the evidence? Ripe fruit. However, when they gave a report to the inhabitants who dwelt there, of the inhabitants, I apologize, who dwelt there, their report that was these people being strong. This is what they said. The report was that the people be strong. When they talked about the inhabitants that dwelt there, they said these people be strong. They saw the fruit. They saw the milk and honey. They saw the plenty of stuff. They came back with the evidence of it. But when they described the dwellers there, they said they be strong. Their report had the people who were listening, shaking in their boots. The description of the inhabitants was like, whoa, the fruit looks really good. It's flourishing, no doubt, but man, you're talking about the ones who dwell there. But one person in the group, the one person in the group said, let us go up and possess it. That one person in the group said that, let's go up and possess it. I don't care what you're telling me about what those people look like. You showing me milk, honey. You showing me the fruit that's up there. Let us go up and possess it. We are more than capable. These are the ones who are overcomers. These are the ones who are persistent. These are the ones who are knocking down and plowing down to get to the goal, the end in mind. These are those people. 
he, and he said this same person he said for we are able to overcome it Caleb Caleb said it that's his name Caleb he said we are victorious winners survivors of this situation basically that's what he said and he didn't go with the spiles. He went back up and he said, let's go. So the men traveled with Caleb to go check it out. And they started their talk. We not be able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. They eat up the inhabitants and all the people that we saw in it were men of great stature. That's how they described them. They were men of great stature. This is how they saw the people before them. They were men of great stature. And then we saw the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Y'all get me with this? I'll repeat it. So this is what they said when the inhabitants went up there. When they went up there to see these inhabitants that were staying there. They said these men were of great statures. And he, they said about themselves. And there we saw the giants. They called these men of great stature giants. And they were in our own sight. We were in our own sight as grasshoppers. They didn't say that they actually knew that they were grasshoppers because they were told. None of that. They said we were in our own sight grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight how many of you are looking at the situation and this obstacle that's in front of you and you're seeing a giant and instead of going and possessing what you need to possess that's on the other side of it instead you start looking at yourself as a grasshopper whenever you look at yourself as a grasshopper then the situation the person anything that's going to look at you as a grasshopper and so we were in their sight you set a goal to make a car purchase, per car purchase. You know the car you want to purchase. You go to check it out. All the cars around you and they look really nice. You can see yourself driving to your destination in the car of choice. You walk in the car lot feeling pretty confident that you'll be able to make a purchase at your three month mark. This is what your goal is, right? The salesperson gets your info. The person says to you, your credit score was way too low you don't make enough money to get that car we have a next to ugly and barely running vehicle that you would suit you a lot better you shrink that one person made a small issue appear bigger than it is y'all looking at that is a big problem aren't you but I don't have enough money but my credit score is low mm-mm Mm -mm. Is your credit score important? Yes. Does your monthly enumeration matter? Yes. But you can be victorious over this. Take out your pebble and throw it. Bullseye. Take out your pebble and throw it. Don't shrink and let the person walk you out the door. Do you want the car or don't you? I'm just making this example up. But you got to think about whatever it is that you have on the other side of that giant. Do you want it or do you not? You know what it is? I'll be back in three months. Or, let me speak to your manager. Or, go to the car lot next door. Whatever the case may be, overcomers have a mindset of conquering. That's my point I'm trying to make. Have a mindset of conquering. I'm not only going to get the car that I want to have in the time frame that I want to have it, but I'm set, but I'm going to make intentional drive back by that car place in front of that person who told me differently and who gave me that poor report. That's what we have to do, right? You go back to the person who gave you the poor report, the person who's saying things that you can't do. You go back and you're like, you're not showing off. You're not showing off. You're not showing off. You're gonna bump into the person who said it anyway. You're not showing off. You're just like, I just need to let you know one monkey can't stop no show. I just need to let you know that I didn't see a giant. I saw a giant. I apologize. I saw a giant, <laughs> but I was plowing through that giant. I pulled out my pebble. I had to, I had to make an intentional throw at the pinpoint of that head of that giant to knock it down. Get out of my way. That's how you got to do with these things. Get out of my way because I'm coming through. 
I'm plowing through. My goal is on the other side of you, giant. I'm not a grasshopper. I'm not looking at myself as a grasshopper so that you can look at me that way. That's not what's going to happen. I'm going to reach my goal, my goal that's set before me, my goal that I'm going to do in the time frame that I said that I'm going to do it. And you and everything else around it has got to go and get out of my way. That's my message to you today, overcomers. We're living an intentional life, not just a time, not just a period, not just an instance, but the life of an overcomer. Everything in your way, plow it out the way, get it out the way. You're seeing the giant, you're seeing the giant. You are seeing a giant. Change that perspective. Okay, so I see the giant. Get out of my way, giant. Life of the overcomer. Until next time, have a blessed day.